I'm excited for you to quilt with me today. And today I'm going to be putting together this um, penny quilt. It's free on my website at karinagardner.com. Um, I am using Apple Pops. There are these great metal pieces here. Just pull them out of my drawer here to make my circles. So if you would like to get these, I do have a discount code for you for coming and making this quilt for me. It's just Karina, C-A-R-I-N-A, -A, and you get 10% off. So go check out their website. I think it's just applepops.com, and you can pull this pattern from my set website at karinagardner.com. Okay, you can see I am in circle paradise right here. I have all the circles going. And you can see I've done it all in Ava Kate just with scraps. I am gonna do one of these in Apple Pops, in these Apple Pops metal pieces. I have two, which makes it a lot easier. If you had three or four, you could make this happen way quicker. A couple of suggestions for you. If you, um, if you pre-cut your circles, it just makes it easier. Like I was trying to cut them as I was going. That was the wrong move. I just cut them, like a whole bunch of them, all at one, to get one go, and then I started ironing them. Okay, so I'm using the Stay Flow starch, and I'm not even cutting them down that much, but I'm just putting a little bit of starch on. You can see my tutorials on my Instagram feed or on the Apple Pops website. And if you're getting these, you can use my code, which is just Karina, for an extra 10% off, especially if you're buying a lot of these, like. 10% off is great. So I they do make a, a fabulous circle, as you can see from all of my circles here. And then just let it cool. Okay, it's totally cool. And so I'm just going to pop it out like that. I do press it on this side first. And then flip it over and press it and that's it okay so um hopefully you have the pattern i put it on my website for you but you need a large piece of white fabric white um rectangle should be um 27 inch by 34 inch i'm just gonna try to lay it out i know you guys aren't gonna see it as well as i would like you to so here is the deal every um, circle should be one inch away from each other. So you're going to have to measure as you go. And in the instructions, if you have the instructions, I've got a three and a half inch measuring square for you. This is going to tell you where to start these, um, these circles. Now you can use a pencil if you want, or you can just do it the way I'm going to show you that I'm going to do it. So I'm going to put this in the corner right here, just like this. So that means my first circle is actually going to be, so this is like the pretend line, should be right in here. Now, if you are nervous and you feel like, oh, I don't know if I can keep it super straight, okay? If you're worried you can't keep it super straight, you absolutely can use pencil lines or a fabric line and you can measure in three and a half inches and just make all of your lines. I'm going to guesstimate today and just see how it goes. And I'm gonna pin each of these down and then lay the whole thing out and see how it goes. So I'm gonna start with my corners first because that will help me determine where I'm starting. So here is my other corner over here. And let's just put this one up here in the corner. So I'm thinking in my head, this is the line right here. And actually this should be pushed in because this is where it starts. Do you kind of see that? If you have a ruler, let me grab my, <clears throat> my ruler. Okay, if you have your ruler, you can lay this out like this right here and just make sure that, you know, it's just hitting on this side and then same deal on this side. You could even use this if you wanted to, once you know that it's in place three and a half inches like this, then you're just going to lay it to make sure that these fit. I think the most important ones to really kind of figure out and measure are these corner ones, because I think the rest of it, you can get together pretty, pretty easily. Okay. And just pin it into place. If you're nervous about making sure these all lay out perfectly, then you can just use your ruler and just lay it against here 
right? So, I mean, it's just meant to be pretty close. I mean, this is quilting. It's, it's not going to be precise and that's okay. So that is three and a half inches up there. So maybe I did that a little, not far enough in and then three and a half this way. These are the only ones you guys I'm going to get like super precise about because I want to make sure that they're in the right spot. If you don't want to do this measuring, the other thing you can do is you absolutely could um, go out of your way to um, get, um, get a fabric that has lines in it, some kind of gritting, and then you can do it that way, which is another way to deal with this. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. So between these should be an inch, okay? So the next one should come, it'll probably be easier if I just go like this, should come one inch from this one. So it should be right about here, okay? So I'm just gonna leave it right there and measure from the top, three and a half inches. So that's about right. And you'll fix all your edges when you go to sew everything down. Okay, same deal. One inch. You can see I'm just kind of mixing my fabrics here. Right here. And then one, three and a half inches from the top. Now, if I've done this correctly, <laughs> And in theory, math always works out on my computer. So let's, fingers crossed, one should fit in between those two. I'm gonna do a cream one. Should fit an inch away from each of these. So here we go. So it should be like here. And it looks like I got a little bit off somewhere. It's okay. So I'm just going to place it between these two. Now just be aware, like things are gonna shift, especially when you start sewing them all down. That's okay. If you have run into the issue I have, like it's probably not exactly an inch. Look at this. That's like half an inch, three quarters of an inch. I'm just gonna move this over a little bit because somewhere I got like a quarter of an inch off. Does that make sense? And I'm just gonna make sure that they look pretty close. That one's almost a little bit more than an inch and that's okay. So just try to get it as close as possible. This is from this point on, you're using this row to measure your next row. So this is a short ruler, I'm gonna get my big one out, but I would just lay this like this here and this is where I would start laying my next row, if that makes sense. So it's a little bit tedious but gosh, you guys, it makes such a beautiful quilt. So um, just mix up your fabrics as you go. You can use this on the edges to make sure that you're kind of staying square and that you're getting pretty close to what where it needs to be. So here's my about one, one inch. And go ahead and pin that. Okay, so I'm gonna finish pinning out the entire rest. So I finished pinning it. And I want you to see, I measured it, of course, from the top first at three and a half inches, but I have a little bit extra down here at the bottom. I did that on purpose, unless you got a little bit off. Um, and so what you're going to do is you are gonna trim it. You're gonna make sure that you have three and a half inches from the bottom row of circles. So this row right here, you're gonna do three and a half inches from this and trim it. It should be only an inch and a half to two inches. So if you're a little bit off, it's no big deal. Um, so once you get that trimmed, then you're going to top stitch these on. So I'm gonna trim that right now. Okay, I've trimmed my nail, so it's three and a half inches on all sides, which is what you want, just to make sure that it's all squared off. Okay, so when you top stitch it, you can make a decision. You can hand stitch it on, which will take a long time, but will be beautiful. Um, you can just do a quick little stitch all the way around. You can do like an applique stitch. So feel free to do what you want. Today, because of time, I am going to just do a quick stitch all the way around. If you want to get really good, you can match your um, threads if you want. Um, I haven't totally decided on mine yet. I'm probably just going to 
kind of look at it on a cream one first. I'm gonna do the white stitch on a cream one, just kind of see what it looks like. Um, but then quickly go through and top stitch all of the rest of them before adding on my border. So I finished putting on all the dots. Aren't those so cute? I did end up deciding to do different colors to match each of the circles. I just wanted it to be as seamless as possible so you didn't really see all the lines because my plan is to machine quilt it around the circles and kind of leave the circles puffy. So because of that, I used the red, the blue, the pink, the black, so that it was pretty pretty nice and seamless okay so the last bit with this is to add your border i have with the fabric you can square it up so i'm going to go ahead and add that um i am doing a let me just measure i'm pretty sure it's four inch yes so a four inch border um i had i've had a lot of questions about this so i had a white and black stripe with my apricot and persimmon line that i use quite a bit still um, if you are looking for just a plain white and black, then you can find that Riley Blake has um, just to some basic stripes and they have one that matched mine. If you want to use a vacate, I have put in some tone on tone stripes. I wanted something like that this time. I thought it would just be a nice way to show off the fabrics. Um, and so I'm gonna use the black on gray today okay here's our finished quilt can you guys see that oh it's so cute i know i can't hold it up straight there we go so hopefully you've seen pictures of it on my instagram feed um it's so cute i'm so excited to machine quilt it i'm just gonna do it i'm just gonna go around the circle so i have like these puffy circles at the end of the day um the, because i top stitched it um, the other thing you could do is you could cut in the back and put stuffing in there so you could make them super puffy. I don't know if I have that in me, but I'm for sure going to sew around it so they're a little bit puffy, which will be awesome. Okay, I hope you had made fun making this with me. If you're looking for the pattern, it's just going to be on my website at karinagardner.com. It's totally free. Um, if you want to use the discount code and get these apple pops, they just use code Karina, C-A-R-I-N-A, for 10% off. And I hope you have a good time making this. I sure did.